In the previous video on natural selection, I told you that evolution through natural selection will have five principles where there is overproduction, there will be variation in the offsprings, uh, the competition will start to happen between the organisms of the same species, and during the competition for resources and survival, uh, organisms with the advantages characteristics will survive and reproduce and the others will die and those that have the advantage when they reproduce they will pass down the advantageous alleles to the next generation thus creating a change in allele frequencies in the future population that is how natural selection can lead to evolution over a period of time for this particular video, we have to see the three types of natural selection that can happen. And the three types of natural selection that can happen are usually stabilizing selection, directional selection, and disruptive selection. So we have to cover the differences in these types of natural selections. Now, in my example here, I'm going to use a population of seahorses, but these Three types of natural selections can also be applied to other types of species. It is just for my video that I'm choosing to use seahorses, all right? Now, so as an example here, you can see the population of seahorses, and you notice that even though they are all the same species, there is a variation in their body size, where very few seahorses are extremely small. Most of the seahorses have an average size, and very few seahorses are extremely large. So if you, were to, if you were to plot a distribution graph over here where the x-axis has the body size, y-axis is the frequency, which means the amount of seahorses with that particular size, you will see that the very little seahorses, uh, the small size seahorses, will be very few. Very large seahorses are also extremely few, but most of them are of average size. So you will get a kind of bell curve distribution over here. So this is just to explain how the curve is achieved. Now, once you get this graph here, I'm just highlighting the mean size is the majority. Most of them fall under the mean size category. And very few of them, like I said, I'm just repeating myself here, very few are very small, very few are extremely large. So that's fine. Now, under the three types of natural selection, Natural selection can undergo something known as stabilizing selection. Now, stabilizing selection just means that the selection pressure in the environment, the factor in the environment, it favors the mean and acts against the extremes. What do I mean by it favors the mean and acts against the extremes is as follows. It means that there are particular environmental factors that will be disadvantageous to the extremely small sized ones and extremely large sized ones, but it will be an advantage for the ones of the average size. Now, some students may ask the question, what exactly might be the selection pressure? We are not exactly sure. They may ask you to suggest a selection pressure. So one such example is maybe the small ones have difficulty looking for food because they're too small. They are always outcompeted by the average size ones. And then maybe the large size ones, they will have difficulty sustaining their body size because they need a lot of food. So it's very difficult to get it as well. So in this case over here, the medium size ones will have the body size makes it they are they don't have a lot of metabolic requirement because their size is not too big, not too small. So they will have access to adequate amounts of food. So that might be the selection pressure. I'm just talking out of my ass here. Okay, just giving a kind of suggestion. So what will happen is the arrow here, as you can see, the arrow is pushing down against the extreme sizes, the ones which are extremely small and extremely large. So what will happen is the very small size ones will die off and the very large size ones will also die off, leaving the average size ones to survive. And when they reproduce, most of them will only be of average size. So as you can see here, when you look at the change in the graph, there are very you can see the change in the graph over here after a few generations. So the allele frequency remains mostly constant because remember, most of the organisms had average size 
and stabilizing selection just maintains the status quo. That's what happens like that. If you're not exactly sure, let's look at it again. The original population was like this, where most of them are of average size. Very few are extremely small, very few are extremely large. But over a few generations, it just maintains this, where most of them just have average sizes. This is known as stabilizing selection. There are no significant changes in the population. Yeah, the average size ones, the means will increase, but otherwise everything else remains fairly stable. Now, the second type of natural selection is directional selection. Directional selection is what happens when the selection pressure acts against one extreme. That means it's an advantage to only one of the extreme sizes. For example, in this case, the selection pressure is a lack of food. Now, when there is a lack of food in the environment, the small size ones will be able to survive with very less food, but the extremely large ones may not be able to survive because they have a greater demand for food. And because of a lack of food, the extremely large ones may die off. So what happens in the graph over here is the selection pressure is only acting against one extreme. So when it acts against one extreme, most of the large ones will die off. Very few of the mean sized ones, the average sized ones might die off as well, as you can see over here. So when the small ones survive and reproduce, they will be able to pass down their alleles more frequently. And when they reproduce, the seahorses in the future generation have a tendency to have smaller sizes because that's the advantage. So when you plot the graph over here for the future population, you notice that the graph has now shifted over to the left. That is why it's referred to as directional selection, and this will lead to a change in the allele frequencies. So you must, when you're asked to plot the graph for the future generation, you must show that the graph, the bell curve, has shifted towards, in this case, it has shifted towards the left because it is favoring the smaller sized ones and it's a disadvantage for the larger sized ones. So obviously the large size population will decrease in this case. The third type of selection that you have to know is something called disruptive selection. Disruptive selection is what happens when the selection pressure favors the extremes and acts against the intermediate. So remember, the intermediates were the ones in the middle here. They were the ones which were the most frequent. Their amount was the most, correct? But now there is a factor in the environment that is acting against them. Now, what might the selection pressure be? In my example here, the selection pressure might be the presence of a predator known as the barracuda. So, why is it that when there's the presence of a predator, the ones in the intermediate, the middle, why would they have a disadvantage if they have an average size? The reason is simple. Because the small sized ones are small enough to hide from the predators. They can just, you know, go behind the seaweed and they are just like, yeah, you can't find me. And the large ones over here are large enough to fight off the predators. The predators would think twice before they attack the larger seahorses. So in that case over there, the medium sized ones or the intermediates have a disadvantage because they are too big to hide from the predators, but they are too small to fight back. So in this case, they are the prime victims when it comes to predation. So what will happen when the selection pressure, the arrow is pressing down against them? Obviously, their amount will decrease. And when their amount decreases, the smaller and larger ones will reproduce, their frequency will increase. And the graph will look something like this, where there are more small ones and more large ones, but extremely few average size ones. In this situation over here, if we were to draw it back again, due to disruptive selection, it will produce two distinct sizes because there are no average sizes anymore. It's no longer like a spectrum of size. Earlier, there were very small, small, medium, big, and very large. But now, there are just extremely small and extremely large. There are no intermediates in between, so it maintains two distinct phenotypes, very small and very large. This is referred to as something known as polymorphism. 
Polymorphism is what happens when you notice in a population of the same species, there are two extremely distinct and different phenotypes. They are the same species of seahorses, but you notice that they are only very small ones and very large ones. That is called very distinct because you can see the clear differences in their size as opposed to the original population. So these are what you have to know about the three types of natural selection. You need to know how to draw the graph for stabilizing selection, directional selection, and also disruptive selection as well.